The six hours of New Hampshire is finally over. Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. Yes, NASCAR's unexpected endurance race, the six hours of New Hampshire, the same day as the six hours of Watkins Glen uh, in the IMSA series, NASCAR managed to have 16 different cautions for 85 laps. That's 28% of the race. You had five different leaders, wet weather tires, a red flag, a lot of sitting around, and Christopher Bell coming out on top. So let's talk about how we got there. The race started off with Chase Elliott shooting out of the gate like a freight train, like that Montgomery Gentry song. And then over the course of the run, Christopher Bell reeled him back in like he was Kevin Van Dam at the Bassmaster Classic. He takes the lead and then he sets sail like another famous Christopher out there, pillaged his way through the back portion of the field and goes on to win stage one. Daniel Hemrick wanted to remind everybody that he was still, in fact, in the Cup Series as he brought out the first caution of the day. And you're like, okay, one caution. We're pacing okay. There's not going to be a ton of cautions. Wrong. There are a ton of cautions that are going to happen. And then you have Alex Bowman. His car's out here blowing white smoke out of the pipes like it's a Cheech and Chong car. He unfortunately had an engine issue on the day. It sounded very funny you don't typically see engine issues out of hendrick motorsports anymore and it was just like pump 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 did not sound very good not what you want a nascar cup series engine to sound like at the end of the day kyle bush's bad streak of luck continues he got involved in an incident with noah gragson and i'll be honest kyle bush might just want to pull a Vontae davis he should have just retired at the stage break or during the red flag of this race heck he might not even want to show up in nashville next week because the man just looks absolutely miserable having to drive these rcr cars and that was just the first of three incidents he would be involved in on Sunday. On the ensuing restart, Joey Logano went down into turn one and didn't turn into turn one. Well, he tried to, but the car didn't want to turn. He then runs up into the side of the nine car of Chase Elliott, who very much did not want all, him to go all Bill Withers and lean on him. Chase tried to get away and then ends up getting spun by Joey Logano there. Weird incident all around. And NBC just never showed the nine car pitting too, which was very odd to me. At some point, Kyle Larson's going to absolutely have to ship Denny Hamlin. Denny Hamlin knows when he gets to the five car, Kyle Larson, he can use him up because nothing's going to happen back to him. And Kyle Larson's spotter told him just that, and Kyle responded by telling him to shut the F up, which... I think that would maybe Kyle just lashing out because you don't want to hear the truth sometimes, but he absolutely needs to start using the 11 car up or else this will just continue on. The internet was not happy about that point being pointed out and instead went and resorted to the fact that Kyle Larson uses other people up. Well, we're not talking about that right now. We're specifically talking about the 11 and the five. I don't care what Kyle Larson does when he races Tyler Reddick or whoever else. We're strictly talking about the five and the 11 here. And at some point, the five is going to have to absolutely ship the 11 car and take a victory away from him, take a spot away from him, just hit him to hit him at this point because all it is, the 11 hitting the 5 and the 5 being like, ah, it's Denny, you know, Denny's always right. Well, how about you tell Denny's wrong at some point here and, you know, send him a message. Then you have Brad Keselowski and the uh, We Gotta Build Him submarine vehicle underneath Martin Shrex Jr., like a sub typically is, and then he just absolutely ships him off into the corner, bombs him into the wall. Martin Shrex Jr. was able to continue, but for Brad, not the best look. Brad's first of two incidents he would be involved in on Sunday. And then you have Kyle Busch getting into another incident, coming off of turn two. He's spinning down the back stretch. And honestly, it just is sad at this point. You're, it's like watching Jimmy Johnson try to raise Indy cars. You just are like, can we please stop this experiment? It's not working. Kyle Busch deserves better than RCR right now. No offense to the people over at RCR. I know there's some fine people over there, but man, it is just not working out in year number two. The sophomore slump for the team from Welcome North Carolina is very much out in full force as it stands. And then we got a caution for rain. Well, for some sprinkles. And then everybody came to pit road and everybody sat around for the better part of 25 minutes. No umbrellas, people chilling. And we were told by the broadcast that this was for the safety of the fans. As we continued to watch fans slide down the hillsides on their chest head first or sit in the grandstands and pound beers and try to make a a pyramid out of the empty beer cans and we just kept sitting around and sitting around and sitting around and you're wondering why did we have wet weather tires if we're not going to use them in the race in the wet weather now a lot of people are like oh you couldn't run them because the mist would be too high and it was raining no for the first like 25 minutes of that red flag you definitely could have used them more than likely could have used them and instead we sat around and did nothing it was very confusing it felt like the coke 600 where we're just going to wait around and then call the race just because well it's gotten to that time point and to nascar's credit we sat around for a while and they didn't call the race they came out and they cleared the 
water off the track. They didn't dry the track. They just cleared the standing water off, and we went back racing with wet weather tires. Um, at one point, before we went back racing, it did actually downpour. The lightning clock was set. Uh, we had lightning strikes. Tyler Reddick's pit box became flooded, and they had to push the roof up, which looked like they nearly doused the entire monitor set for the team there, and that feels like it would have been bad. Electronics and water typically don't mix very well right there like Kyle Busch and RCR at this point so we finally go back racing with wet weather tires and NASCAR mandates wet weather tires okay great contrary to what Steve Latar had said earlier in the race where he said that wet weather tires were just used to get the races started when there's nothing to use them during the race made zero sense by that logic but if we're going to be um, nitpicky here this was technically getting the race started again after a red flag even though they could have just pitted and put them on earlier I still stand by that Whatever. We finally go back racing with the wet weather tires and Ross Chastain spins around. Okay, fine. And then there's another caution and another caution. Carson Hosevar goes around and then you have a big mix up of Noah Gragson, Bubba Wallace and Bubba just goes and parks in his pit box. Bubba looked a touch out of it when he got out of the car. So hopefully he got checked out at the medical center before we even got back to racing though, coming out of that red flag. On the pace laps, Kyle Busch just goes off into turn three and just pounds the outside wall, hops out of the car, and he sat around for that entire red flag only to just get right back out of the car. He carried his helmet to the rental car, and it looked like he did not want to be there anymore. And I actually feel bad for the guy at this point. So we finally do get back to racing, and Chris Bell asserts himself as the dominant one here. And I will say this, the wet weather tires make for a great racing product you have guys running multiple different lanes they're four or five wide guys down on the apron guys all the way up against the wall trying to find the grip and then under the caution they're all going dukes of hazard style just down to the inside wall right here and all trying to run through the standing water down the front stretch yeah it was a compelling race there at the end Wet weather tires probably saved it, made the race a little bit more interesting than it likely would have been. New Hampshire is a pretty forgettable race on the schedule at this point, other than the fact that it just seems to always rain. So Chris Bell finally comes out on top. The final caution of the race was for Brad Keselowski. He was spun down in turns one and two. And when I tell you NASCAR held this caution for the entire lap, the racetrack's one mile long, it felt like they held this caution for nearly nine tenths of that of that mile and then right as they throw it brad starts rolling again and that wasn't on brad brad was trying to get the car refired it was just an unfortunate timing if nascar would have held it for half a second longer which unfortunately would have probably put brad into a pretty precarious situation we probably would have kept staying green and then we would have seen if josh berry had anything for christopher bell Regardless, it sets up a late race restart right there. Uh, green, white checker. Bell shoots off. Barry gets up to second because uh, he starts on the outside and follows him. Chase Briscoe does beat him to the line on the last lap to finish second. Josh Barry finishes third. But at the end of the day, a really solid race thanks to the wet weather package. Some honorable mentions from this race, though. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. goes back-to-back -back four top tens. He finished in the top five last week at Iowa, finishes seventh this weekend as well. John Hunter Nemechek finishes eighth. That team desperately needed it over at Legacy Motor Club. And then you have a guy like Harrison Burton. He ran up in the top ten a lot of the race once the strategy kind of played out and the wet weather worked for him. He ends up coming home with a P14 finish. And then you have a guy like Ryan Priest comes home P11. Guys that needed good runs actually did have pretty good runs today. Justin Haley was running top five on speed on merit in a Rick Ware racing car at a non-drafting track he ultimately did not get the finish that he needed though but it was still cool to see them have that speed and be up there at the time so I guess the only complaint I have coming out of this race is the fact that NASCAR needs to allow teams to decide when they want to switch from the wet weather tires to the slick tires because late in the race there with 10 laps to go a caution comes out and NASCAR says, you're not pitting, you're not pitting for tires. We're just going to go back to racing. It would still be a closed pit stop if you did, cold pit stop, whatever you want to refer to it as. And then the teams bullied them into letting them put on new wet weather tires. Listen, first off, can't get bullied around by the teams. If you if those teams had blistered their tires, well, you made your bed, now you have to lay in it. That type of situation there, because some teams didn't blister their tires uh, while others did. So maybe for a level playing field, you can make the argument for that. But my argument is if there's a dry line forming at some point, NASCAR, like other series, should just allow teams to go out there and put on slick tires if they want to. Yes, could it cause more cautions? Sure, but we had an abundance of cautions in the rain anyways. So why not just let them take the chance? And it would be entertaining. It adds another aspect of strategy to this race, and it would be fun fun at the end of the day it would just be fun to see them have that control i don't like the whole baby 
nanny state type of thing of holding their hands and being like, you can do this, but you cannot do that. No, just let them do it. And now I get it. That's their plan for the long run. I just wish that that plan would get sped up a little bit here, like Tyler Reddick going to the 45 car. Let's go ahead and just jump ahead a year and make sure that we implement it now. So I will say that's the first time NASCAR's used them mid-race like this, so I get it. There's some learning process behind it, but for the very near future, like the next time this happens, I would like to see that go out there and happen. So let me know in the comments what you thought about the race. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.